Hello, uh, this class is, uh, is an introduction to the fundamental of engineering FE exam or also sometimes it's called EIT, engineering uh, in training. Uh, I hope you will find it uh, helpful. Those are my notes and also um, uh, some uh, information that I gathered from, um, from uh, different sources. So with that, uh, uh, let's start. Why do we want to become a professional engineer? You know that taking the FE exam is the first step to becoming a professional engineer, a PE. The ultimate goal is to be a PE. So why do we want to be a PE? It certainly uh, will give you a better chances for promotion if you want to open your own consultant. It's a prestigious. Uh, it shows commitment to the engineering. Uh, in the past, becoming a PE was kind of optional, but right now you have to be a PE uh, to succeed in the engineering profession. Uh, it will allow your company to have more project and, of course, ultimately promotion for you, which will end up um, giving you a higher salary. What are the steps to become a professional engineer? The first one is take the FE exam, then you become engineer in training. You graduate from four-year college accredited by Abbott, Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology. You pass the eight hours professional practice exam, which is the second day of the PE exam. And then you have four years of engineering experience under a professional engineer. He has to testify or series of many professional engineers. One, two, three, it doesn't matter. So they certify that, yes, you have worked under them. And then you apply to the uh, licensing board and you become an PE. Starting in 2004, the FE exam right now is called CBT, Computer Based Testing. It's no longer uh, handwritten, it's all by computer. There are seven disciplines. Those are the seven disciplines. So if you are civil, definitely take it in the civil. If you are electrical, take it in the electrical. But if you don't fit in one of those six disciplines then take it in this one if you are agricultural engineer and so on take it in this other disciplines the FE exams the other discipline I mentioned that it's meant for others who does not fit in one of those six categories uh, examinee will take one of the seven individual exams there are a, a total of 110 questions total uh, and there are some topics that, that, for example, if you are a civil engineer, you will not be required to uh, study or uh, questions will not come from, for example, thermodynamics. So let me give you an example of that uh, in the civil engineering uh, uh, exam related. This one is from the uh, ncees.org uh, website. So if you are not civil, just go to their website and they will give you uh, similar. So this is the current or the old civil engineers. They were supposed to answer questions from electricity, thermodynamics, chemistry, and so on. This is the old one. Now, starting 2014, this is the new one. You can see that the all those disappeared. You don't have to study this. You don't have to study. There are no questions from either one of them. And all of those are from your field. So those are civil, civil, civil. All of those are civil disciplines. And those are the general engineering relate engineering topics related to all engineers math static dynamic and so on so again if you are electrical mechanical go to uh, the ncs.org website and get a list will give you a very good idea the fe exam that's the new one of course we're talking about the new one total of six hours eight minute tutorial two minute uh, signing a statement the total time for your exam is 5 hours and 20 minutes 25 minutes break in between the 5 hours and 20 minutes and 5 minutes post exam survey that you take so the total is 6 hours if the exam is 5 hours and 20 minutes that means every question an average of about uh, 3 minutes average 3 minutes uh, there are schedule there are 25 minutes schedule break and that happen when you answer half of the questions so half of the 110 questions about 55 questions whenever you answer 55 they prompt you 
to take a 25 minute break if you don't want to take it you don't have to and scheduled break you can leave any time uh, take two three minutes break but that will count against you that's the clock will not stop exam tools they will give you a, a reusable pad and uh, erasable to like a scratch paper but it's not a paper you will get the result very fast in seven to ten days the passing score is a minimum competence it's not a curve it's a minimum competence that you have to accomplish practice exam ncs.org have very good practice exam i highly recommend you buy it and uh, practice it because it is very similar to the exam this one talks about the exam is linear not adaptive meaning the questions are fixed if you answer a question wrong it doesn't affect the next question so that's linear uh, retaking the exams you can take it once every two months and in the entire year you can take it three times per year this is a screenshot of uh, the actual computer screen on the left hand side is a searchable window so you can search the uh, reference manual on this one when you search this is the page that appears from the reference manual hopefully it's related to this question which is in this case is a civil engineering question for uh, con reinforced concrete so if you if it doesn't match the question those formulas are not for this question you could go and uh, search uh, a new topic and so on so this is the screen question page from the uh, reference manual that you have searched and then this is where you search metric versus uh, English it's whatever typically practice in your field 25 minutes quest minute break I mentioned this and it's in uh, it's not in the mid half of the time it is half when you answer 55 questions you can flag a question this is important you can flag a question if you're not sure of the answer so you could go back and double check it after you submit the 55 questions you cannot go back and and uh, uh, re-answer or recheck any questions um, this one it says each exam include limited number that's not that important for you passing but it's just an information they have NCS they have some questions that's not graded but you don't know which one are those but that therefore you have to answer all of them as they are uh, requ required questions this is the sample uh, uh, exam specification for the FE of course for the civil part so for civil mathematics 7 to 11 question probability and so on so you can go to ncs.org website and get the complete list so you have an idea what type of questions what type of topics they will ask you uh, uh, this one is uh, this one is uh, exam specifications for other disciplines so for the other disciplines it's same thing you could uh, uh, go and get the complete list so it shows you that math this many probability and, and so on reference manual is very interesting very good ta uh, book I advise you that you could buy it from now it's not very expensive or I think NCES they still allow you to download it for free from their website so the visit where those but you need to get this download it have it everywhere where with you before the exam study it 100 percent because the questions the formulas are from this reference manual now i want to cover the what's called the concept of most nearly most nearly many questions in the exam they don't tell you the question the answer is this they say what the answer is most nearly is that so there are two types of question if it is an analysis problem then select the choice that's clearly not clearly closely the closest choice close to your uh, found answer however if it is a design problem if it's a problem that has some physical meaning then you have to take a step back and see what you are designing and in this case you have to decide should I go with the answer that is lower than my lower than the number I found or should I go with the answer higher than the number I found this is assuming that the number you found you cannot find it in the choices that they gave you so what do you do so let's go to an example we'll make it clear in this one it says what is most nearly see most nearly what is most nearly 
the reaction at P. So they want us to find the reaction at P most nearly. Here it is. We are not going to go over it, but this we do this in static. So here is the reaction. You found it, and the reaction at B is 2.66 kN. Now you go back and you say, which one? It is definitely not A. That's too small. It's not B. That's too far from my answer. So the answer is either C or D. So the question is, which one? I get 2.66. Should I go lower and select 2.6, which is the closest? Or should I go way higher and it is 2.9, which is not the closest? The answer is, the answer is C, not D. And the reason is because this is an analysis problem. You cannot just go and arbitrarily increase or decrease. You just go to the closest to your answer, which is 2.6, because it's an analysis problem. So let's go here. This is a beam, and they want you to find, to calculate the deflection. So what is the deflection in 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 um, in this case? Okay. So the deflection. All right. Okay, just do this. Sorry. Okay. So the deflection. This beam is going to deflect this way, right? And they want you to calculate this deflection, the vertical deflection of how much this beam will bend. So you calculate and your answer is 2.1. Now you go back. It is not A, clearly not A. It's not D. It's either B or C. So what do you do in this case? Should you go a little lower, that's 1.98, or should you go a little higher, which is 2.25? The answer is you have to go with C because you know what is deflection. Even though this is an analysis problem, it's not a design problem, but it has some physical meaning that the and you know, not only physical meaning, you know that it is wrong to report a deflection less than what you calculate. Deflection is a bad thing that happens to the structure. So you cannot report less than what you calculated. You have to be conservative and you report higher. So even though you calculate 2.1, you say the deflection is 2.25. So the designer has to design accordingly. Uh, you know, the glass will not crack and so on. So you have to design for this deflection. So the answer is C. Now here's another, now the same problem, but now you are asked to design the dimensions of the beam. This is a cross section of this beam. It has width of B and height H. So you calculate, you find your answer to nine inch high and 3.3 inch wide. What do, you, what do you do? Well, all of them are nine, so let's go to B. Five is too high, right? Six also is too high, so the answer is either. Uh, sorry, the the yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So A is too high, C is too high, and the answer is either B or D. So now your calculate the width you required by your calculation is 3.3 .3 inch. You cannot go and say that's the closest, therefore use three inch. That is under design. That is not a conservative design. So the answer is clearly, the most nearly is 9 by 4. So the answer is B, not D. Because if you take D, you are designing a structure that is not safe. And the last example is, this is a concrete retaining wall. This is soil pushing the retaining wall to make it rotate around or overturn around this point. So the question is, most nearly, what is the factor of safety against overturn? We calculate the factor of safety. We do this in soils and foundations, not in this class. So we calculate, it's 3.6. This is the safety factor that this wall has against overturning. Now we go to the choices. It is not D, it is not C. It's either A or B. So what should I take? Should I go and say, oh, it is three, should I, go? it's in between. So should I report 3.4 or 3.8? You take a step back and you say, I cannot report 3.8 because I don't have 3.8 safety factor. I have only 3.6. So the answer is 3.4. In this case, you go lower. 3.6, you go lower. And you, and you go by going lower, you are reporting a number that is safe. And that's conservative also. So that's the concept of most nearly. This is the passing uh, grade you can or passing percentages you can look through it uh,
if you want to buy books I recommend you buy start with ncs.org they have very good book they are the agency who put the exam so why not buy their books this is another agency you could buy from ncs.org have those type of those type of um, books uh, solved problems so I advise you to buy it this is for civil and so on they have some other ones calculator make sure you get a calculator from this list visit the website to make sure this is the latest don't get any calculator that not any on list they will take it away from you preparing for the exam you study topic that's directly related to the exam of course solve more examples than spending a lot of time studying theory your selected example should be very close to what appears in the exam so how do you know well look at the sample exam sample exam will tell you what type of questions and normally when you take a uh, uh, um, a, a review class the instructor try to cover as many topics as possible so here are some exams tips that I collected for you don't memorize any equations because all of them in the reference manual I recommend you take a mock exam that's a very if you don't have an agency that gives a top mock exam do one for yourself go to the library before the day before the exam solve one complete sample exam it's a perfect review for you 20% of the exam of the exam questions are repeated so that means look at sample exams 20% of those will be repeated subject you really know you really need to concentrate on them subject you do not know in this case just study at least the easy and say and the easy questions if you are working take around a week before the exam that is very very recommended so you can review and plan and, and so on in the exam use the index in the reference manual in the exam use a stopwatch I don't know if they give you a stopwatch on the computer but you could have your own if you have to guess use best engineering judgment rather than C's do not spend a lot of time in one question if you spend a lot of time in one question that means you don't know the topic just skip it uh, mark it anything and, and go to the next one first solve the easy question and the one that you know very well and then go to the one that you don't know and it is better to solve 60 or 70 percent better to solve 70 percent of the questions with 100 percent certainty rather than you solve all the questions and you have no idea how well you did and that's the end of my uh, uh, class to prepare you or to help you to take and pass hopefully the FE exam I hope you find this um, helpful and uh, if you have any uh, questions my email is in the in the first slide you could uh, email me and I will try to respond to you good luck